Opa! Alright, here we go. Get ready to have a good time. This is exciting, isn't it? Alright, we're on. Hello, testing, testing, testing. Welcome aboard the Dreamliner. It's the only way to fly. <laughs> I've allotted one hour for recreational activity. There's no time for irrelevant conversation. Fun will now commence. Gary, Gary, Gary. Here's a young speaker who is really in demand. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. <laughs> Wait, there's more. That's what I'm talking about. He is Gary Meyer. Three, two, one, zero. We have liftoff from Liftoff Air Force at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central on the 5th of August, 2022. Welcome to another edition of... The Gary Meyer Show. Cocktail Hour. Cocktail Hour. Cocktail Hour. Cocktail Hour. Cocktails. Woo! Drinks. Live. 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 Of course, no matter where you are, and no matter who you are, it's time for a digital mimosa. On every live show, we remind you about our preferred streaming platform, the GearForce Live YouTube channel, and we ask you to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when we're live. Well, this past week, I heard a kindly old woman named Marion say just how much she liked YouTube because her friend Jean showed her that it has lots of cute videos of cats doing all sorts of things. Now, you can tell your friends that the GearForce Live channel does too. The show has a thing for schnauzers, and oh yeah, we also salute canine heroes, retired dogs that have served our country and the organization that works to take care of their needs. More about that coming up on the show. Like and share the show on all of the social media channels. During the live show, we can even see your comments on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, which means we may show them on the screen and or talk about them. Okay, the checklist is complete. So now, fasten your seatbelts. It's time to go wheels up on the Gear Force Live. Live! 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 Boom! Shaka laka! Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Alan Delinka, to the cocktail show. Welcome. And I have to do something to get this started, get the wheels up. We light those fires. We kick the tires. We light them up. There we go. Okay, Alan, you have run the opening, as we've seen, and that tells everybody what's coming up. The lawyer will talk about psychedelics. And I wanted to mention the cats that were in that opening video. Those are Leslie's cats. I think she's got 25, 30 cats now, and she was nice enough to roll some vid and show us what they do, which is chase a ball or a ball of yarn or something. They like to see little balls, right? Leslie, am I correct in that assumption? Um, yeah. And, you know, funny for having 30 cats, we still only have one cat box. I, I wonder why people don't want to stay at our house very long. Oh, well. <laughs> kidding, kidding. I have two cats, two cat boxes. Uh, I have learned, regular. Leslie, and I shared this with you, that this show is in the top one and a half percent of all podcasts on the planet. Yep. And there are, I think, around 7 million, 8 million podcasts. So I am honored to be in that. That section, top one and a half percent. And that is encouraging as we have entered the seventh year. So if you could like, subscribe, and tell your friends and get us into that one percent, we would be so eternally grateful. I think that would be 0.5 percent and then 0.3 to Joe Rogan. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it turns out like if some podcasters don't keep their yappers shut, they're going to be shut down eventually. We could just end up in number one place by default. That, if, that's right. If they keep going if the off. the lawsuits in, keep going. Right. If they keep going into the Twilight Zone, we just might move <laughs> up by attrition. There you go. Let me say and, a lot of And I'll put some more. I'll put the cat back up to get more people to join the YouTube page. If we got that many listeners, you got to come over to YouTube. Join us on Gareforce Live on the YouTube. Yeah. All okay, right. I'll get a live one here. Hold on. And I want to say hello to some people <laughs> that have checked in already. Charles from WRLR. He's on the radio in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Lloydster. He's got some hot coffee. I'm sure it's roast to order coffee. And speaking of roast to order coffee, 
Mike Mascow has checked in. He is the proprietor and fine sponsor of the Gear Force. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you. Samantha from Mundelein, Illinois. Mac from Queen Creek, Arizona. Gregory from Arlington Heights, Illinois, future home of the Chicago Bears. Lynn from Decula, Georgia. I think that's how you say that. Greg, Doug, Johnny from Michigan. Hey, Johnny. Thanks for the photos of what you ate this week in the Michigan area. And Doug, did I mention Doug? I mentioned Marianne from Dubuque, Iowa, from America's Heartland. Mike, Martin from British Columbia. Kathleen, Jan. Now I go to the screen door, and then we're going to pop that. Oh, look at that! What? That's Angus. Stroking the tail here, so boss. Stroking the tail. Live cats. They're very popular. Yesterday he was doing cat toes here. Look at the camera, honey. I'm cute. What's the name? That's Angus. That's Angus. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is this right? Yeah, that's right. Uh <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I got it. I got it now. Uh, let's see. Jan from Chicago. Paul from Valparaiso, Indiana. Valpo. And Tom. He's from, it just flipped by. He's from these United States. Chris from Arizona. David. Yeah, he says Halloween cat time too early. I think so. But they're starting to load up the candy if you've been out. And the pumpkins are out too. Police. Mike from Orland Park, Illinois. Good to see you. Frank. Jack from Schaumburg, Illinois. And Samantha says Angus is so cute. He is. He's yes. adorable. He's good. And I like your cat. And I've got my two schnauzers that kiss. That's something. <laughs> see, a little bit of something for everybody. That's what we try to do. Let us remove the wine condom to get started and then get that first comment on the screen, Alan, if you will. Here got we a go. Josh Chardonnay today. and That used to be my radio name. <laughs> Josh Chardonnay. Look yeah. at that. That's ready to it go. It was Josh After Dark. Yeah. We're going to pop it. There it goes. Here it goes. Oh, <laughs> good thing the cat was behind you. <laughs> he thinks it's a toy. No, yes, it's not yours. It will be when he finds it. Here's the reason I drink on Friday. Oh, first of all, here's the key, the Keeley comment. Last week, I mentioned how much my schnauzer likes my phone's ring vibrator. This week, I trained my schnauzer to come when I call. That's very <laughs> good that you can train your schnauzer to do that. That, that is. is really good. Thank you for kicking things off. Here's why I drink, because I'm looking at the Facebook, and I see this posting from this TV station in Boston, and the post was, uh, last Thursday was the the final sunset at 8 p.m. until next May. Oh, when they do that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. Why do you have to do that? We know what's coming. And they are so anxious to tell us that, oh, have you noticed? Daylight shrinking, leaves are falling. But Ryan, Wisconsin reporter Ryan, he's playing into it. He sent me this card. It's a Thanksgiving <laughs> card. Uh, full plates, full house, full hearts. Happy Thanksgiving, wishing you all the very best of Thanksgiving and the whole family has Aww. wished that. Okay, and he sent, he sent me, now I have my own wine condom. Oh, finally. look at us. Oh, yeah. yeah. And all he right sent here. me a Fannie Mae, I'm getting a glare on that. Oh, mint a melt, mint away. melt away. One of my favorites. And thank you, Ryan, for that. Always like getting a little gift package from Ryan. In fact, he sent me a package of Mr. Clean. And in the pre-show, I said Dr. Pepper sanitary wipes or something. And it's, it, <laughs> I was that's, trying to figure out what that was all about. Oh, those, um, they're not the full sponge shape Mr. Clean wipes. These are the sheets? Is no, that what he these are the sponges. You? I just oh, okay. got the last one and I did. Okay. First of all, Tom from Oak Forest, Illinois, my, my hometown, checking in. That's where, I haven't mentioned this in a while, and I encourage these people to advertise, and they haven't budged, but I will throw in a plug. Socks Outlet in Oak Forest, Illinois, if you don't like paying $10, $12 for a pair of socks, which I don't, I would go there, ladies and gentlemen, and you can get a bag of underwear and socks. I walk out of there with 10, 15 pairs of socks, 10 pairs of underwear, 35 bucks. 
total. And you only wear them once, right? And then yeah, you throw I them out. Toss them. Because I can't. That's how you end up with socks on the side of expressways. People like Gary, you wear some ones. And right. Just... Right. If you're behind me, it is not uncommon <laughs> to see my window go down and a pair of underwear go out uh, because I'm done with them. It's done. Done. Okay. Final 8 p.m. sunset Eastern uh, was last Thursday. Okay. This was on the news? Facebook post from this oh, TV Facebook. station. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was a TV station. Okay, because there's this other viral video going around these days from a TV station here in Chicago, our ABC affiliate, I believe it is, um, where the weatherman is standing in front of the big screen. And we know that that's what all the um, corporate consultants are telling people to do. You yes. now have to stand in front of the big Hold screen. Hold your tablet. Right. Well, apparently no one told him how this thing works. And he accidentally the touched the screen, the screen, and it turns out the screen is sensitive. So he can actually touch it and enlarge and make it smaller and it tilts and he can move it. And he had no idea that this piece of equipment that he okay. uses right. worked had, that way. Had heavy properties that did those things. So yeah. I'm sorry, who's I know running what the joint? I know. What's <laughs> the training? Know? Is there any training? <laughs> Come on. I mean, it's kind of cute and, ha, 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 and they made fun of it, but it's where the news starts becoming about them. And that starts making me feel a little uncomfortable when it's like, where are the news? No, you oh, should oh, come be on. recording it. But... It's, it's house fires. It's emergency <laughs> plane landings. Right. And if there's a big lottery jackpot, they go to the lottery store. That's about it. <laughs> they already have all the stock video of the storms. Um, so we they're can ready see to the, go. Nothing the really new there. Flapping in the breeze, yeah. Stop sign oscillating. The If the stop light is on a wire over the street, they show that oh, dancing. Yeah, yeah. And then the big piece of tin from a roof blowing down the street. From no gas time. station, yep. But, but yet there's the reporter doing the 45 degree <laughs> angle in the 100 mile an hour winds to show us how strong 100 mile an hour winds are. And these people give us the news. Frightening. I wish we could show these videos. We can't because every time we did early into the cocktail show a couple of years ago, we get flagged and they take the whole show down and Alan had to go through all kinds of crap to repost it. It's all copyrighted or trademarked. You, th you think it's the Wild West out there, but when you do it on a show like this, you can't. You know, they have their eye on us, obviously, because we are in the top one and a half percent of all podcasts yes. and video casts ever. So um, yep. that's probably why they're paying extra attention, extra scrutiny. There you go. All right. So speaking of doors, my screen door in the pre-show where we sit and gather our thoughts, Keith, producer Keith and Ryan are talking and Ryan goes, hey, Keith, thanks for sending me that info on the Titanic door, my wife is going to order it. Uh, now you've got my attention. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I go explain. And let's bring Keith and Ryan on and have this conversation. Guys, it's already getting dark here yeah. in the uh, top 1.5% <laughs> news center. <laughs> okay. So, so I get a uh, message from Keith earlier this week. Hey, uh, look at what Amazon has. It's a it's a door like the what Jack and Rose were on in the ocean, and maybe you'll want this for Jamie. So I read the reviews and thought, eh, they don't have good reviews. So good I reviews didn't buy in it. that it doesn't look like a door, it doesn't I, I float think, like a door. What could be wrong know. with an inflatable door that could get bad reviews? <laughs> I, I maybe it wasn't good quality. I don't know. So I didn't buy it, but then I sent it to her and she said, Did Keith send you that? I have to have it. I'm ordering it right now. <laughs> okay. Clear, clearly it's not iceberg resistant <laughs> no that's, no that's but, you, but you could see you could play the game you decide that's what it is can you really get two people on there would jack have survived that's what that other panel <laughs> i like that I, and I, I love how in one of the pictures they're sitting indian style playing cards yes that would be on, the, <laughs> on that two panel when uh-huh yes that's what i would do after a luxury liner <laughs> sunk in the middle of the atlantic when it's five above i just get the deck of cards out and wait to be rescued <laughs> uh huh. Myth Mythbusters already tested this. They even made a door of the same <laughs> material in the movie with Jim Cameron on the show, and they showed that that the two of them could have survived. And Cameron said that's impossible. The story required Jack to die. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Aww. 
No. Yeah. So, okay. So for thirty dollars and uh, two days of Amazon shipping, it should be here by Sunday. Okay. And knowing you, Ryan, you said, are you going to put that with all your your cleaning products that you've ordered? And then there's a heated discussion. <laughs> uh-huh. And then and, and then Ryan stays home and his wife and son go travel for the weekend. Yes, they, 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 that's right. But I, I think it's end up at my mother-in-law's pool. So she, we're lucky enough to have, she has a nice pool. So I think you that's know, where it's going to go. In three weeks, Ryan's going to tell us how to decorate a garage. That's He's right. going to have all this stuff for when he is forced to move out of his that's house. That's right. That's right. There's, there's the tight tag. Pad. There's the other. How there's to, the how to winterproof you your garage. <laughs> yes. Yes. How to sleep mm-hmm. on yeah. a, an inflatable door. <laughs> As well, I'll just put, put those curtains back up in the van that I had last weekend and yeah, just go roam around. <laughs> yes, we're going to get into your little <laughs> yes. excursion from last week when Late. you do your report yes, in a little absolutely. while. And we've done all the basics to get this thing wheels up, right? We're good. We're going to give away a wine condom later in the program and something else out of Leslie's fun bag that she will pull out when. When do you want to see that? Whenever you want me to. I think we get everybody wet now with their whistle and okay. take it out. Because I got to tell you, the I thing think Ellen's is... going to rearrange all that and make it something. Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing that's on top is honestly the coolest prize that we have in the fun bag. And that is your very oh, own wow. Fire TV Amazon stick. Fire stick. So you, can, you, watch, you, so you can watch uh, uh, YouTube on there. You can watch the show on the big right. screen. Nice. So y- you plug this, it's just a, a quick little plug in. And next thing you know, you can pull up all the apps. If you have streaming services, yep. it's all right there. And then YouTube as well. So you can watch us on the big screen. Ryan, yep. you, you sent subscribe that to, to the, the first live YouTube channel. <laughs> yes, I, I did send that. I, that was a, that was a Amazon prime day deal. Okay. Thank you for that. And Alan, you were saying what? I said, you can watch it on that big screen TV of yours if you subscribe to the Gear Force Live yeah. YouTube channel. It mm-hmm. comes in real nice. I After yes. the show, I go back to make sure that we don't have any significant hiccups and look at it on my 65-inch TV. Looks nice yeah. on there. I didn't do yard work, which I usually do as part of my routine on Friday leading up to the cocktail show, but I had to do something because I, I got all that energy going and I had one more Mr. Clean handy wipe. Or, what is that thing called? The magic eraser, right? Right. That Ryan sent me. Eraser, now yes. you're going to have to start probably collecting some of this stuff for your bachelor garage. That's right. I'll, I'll have to repost some of it back. Right. Uh-huh. Suddenly, I could use that fire stick and those wipes in the garage where I live uh-huh. now. <laughs> Send me some lunch money. I, I, I'm going to need some food, so you, you know, take a little lunch money. Uh, send him back that Fannie Mae, Gary, because uh, yeah, he yeah. may have yeah. to use that That's as rations. a meal. Suddenly, <laughs> the meltaway looks pretty damn good. Hey, Dan said he's watching us on his 55 incher, and he can see my nose hairs. I don't think so. I pluck. <laughs> I pluck. Okay, that's the scary thing about this high def. I'm hideous. Uh, I, I'm just going to wear a bag in about a month and just call it a day during the show. So to give to give away the prize, let's put up a hashtag. I've 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 got uh, I've got yeah. Gear Force Live hey. to oh, encourage people nice. to subscribe to our channel. Very simple and effective. You want people to do that now? We're not going to pick for a while. Yeah, sure, you can you can load it up. throughout the throughout the show. Sure. Okay. Yeah, get it up there. Call your friends, and they can get in on it too. There if you go. See, this yes, is if you've won, please let somebody else win. Please. Deborah says she won a few weeks ago. She has to sit it out. Yeah, we just want to have some of the wealth spread around a little bit. About and and Gregor, Gregory, the backstory of me moving to the garage is, is I'm uh, giving hassling my wife about her cleaning products and the stuff she buys. So Gary's convinced that I'm uh, I'm I'm headed out to the garage here one of these days. I push my luck too much. Yeah, I think you do. And <laughs> I'm just here to yeah. tell you, you might want to back yeah. off. Just let uh-huh. her get the floating door and yep. anything else related to the Titanic. <laughs> And the reason Keith, I think, found that is because he's into the Titanic. Mm-hmm. And I guess y'all look for Titanic products. Is that it, Keith? Well, I actually, uh, somebody, I, well, I'm in like three different Titanic uh, groups on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it popped up in one of those. So that, okay. that's where if, I saw it. If you're new to the program, Keith made that Titanic model from scratch mm-hmm. out of balsa wood. Not a yeah. kit, out of no scratch. Directions. No That's how active my social life was. <laughs> okay. Well, now I have to ask. You're in three Titanic groups. What do you talk about? 
the Titanic, Gary. I know. <laughs> it was over 100 years ago. What is new? Uh, well, what's what's new is that the uh, the ship is actually collapsing. So that that's uh, that's new. Okay. Uh, the real one, not yours, right? Yeah, yeah, the the, yeah, okay. the real one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so so there's actually a, a group that uh, decided that they were going to do yearly uh, expeditions down to the Titanic, and um, like they actually charge people, I think, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So if you want to take up like a a GoFundMe collection to yeah. send me to the Titanic, uh, Misty already said I can't go to space, but maybe she'll let me go yeah. to the Titanic. You and Jamie, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. You and Jamie, I'll, I'll, <clears throat> she'll she'll be she'll go with you. Okay, correct me uh, if I'm wrong. It's five hours in that little sub down to the wreckage. Well, it's two hours each. Two hours each way. Okay, so, yeah, five rounds. Oh, four that's hours. so yeah. much. Okay, yeah. about four or five round trip. Yeah, I, I, there's no way I'd get so damn claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. How really could you do that? No, uh, I could do it once. <laughs> if I knew I was going to go see the Titanic, the trip back would probably be worse because you know you you don't have anything to look forward to. And how do you yeah. go to the bathroom? Uh, there's a there's a bottle they passed around. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of going to the you get bathroom, your authentic Titanic diaper. Right yeah, there, is, like is that one of the products that you, you found? They load you in. It the should first be. Time. Yeah. yeah, right next and to the And here's the Titanic door. throw up bag and all right. sorts of stuff. Yeah. Here's all the stuff that if you go in the sub, you might want to buy. It's the Titanic diaper with the logo on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But but anyway, this uh, this year they're they're actually there right now, and uh, the video that's coming back, it's it's uh, things are getting pretty rough down there at, at the Titanic. Okay. It's not going to be around much longer. Speaking of going to the bathroom, before we started, we had a bit of a discussion about going to concerts, and Elton John is in Chicago this evening playing this huge venue called Soldier Field, and I had been to a few concerts there over the years. We'll never go to an outdoor concert again for a number of reasons. It's rain or shine. And I've been to a few where it starts raining and you're sitting there going, well, the band <laughs> is covered. You're out of luck. But the main thing is I had tickets for the Rolling Stones on the field and I get to the, the row where I'm at and there must have been 40, 50 seats in the row. And both sides were already occupied. I didn't get there early enough. So now you're climbing over people to get to those middle seats. And then there are people in your seats. So now you got to flag somebody. It's a nightmare. But that nightmare is nothing compared to, say you're sitting there an hour into the show and you have to go to the bathroom. And the bathroom is way, way away inside the bowels of the building and you're on the, on the ground. Don't say bowels. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, where's the pleasure in these, in these concerts when you're that far away from a bathroom? And then... Who said they went to an Elton John concert and half the people were going to the bathroom most of the time? Yeah, I That'd said that Alan. when I when I saw the when I saw him perform here in Orlando, the the crowd just seemed to be going to the bathroom every number. <laughs> okay. Well, you're talking an it older. Was, it was more than it was more two, than the yellow brick road. One again. <laughs> right, including Elton. I think he had a go about every third song. <laughs> Well, yeah. the cool the cool thing about the end of Elton's show, and I don't know if he does this every show or just did it for the show I saw, he had uh, rebooked the show that I saw. He he was supposed to come. He was sick. We all went home. We came back months and months later, and at the very end of the show, we knew he was flying back to London like immediately. And at the end of the show, he's gone backstage. The band keeps playing. The band keeps playing. Then he came back in a tracksuit that looked like he was all ready to fly. Right? Mm -hmm. That he was gonna just ride this little car up the stage, which he does, uh, through the screen, and then probably had a back door back there and went right on to the limo right off to Heathrow. Sure. What are you going to do, hang out and meet people? <laughs> and this is the fifth year of his... This is his fifth year of the farewell tour, I think. <laughs> of yeah. his three-year farewell yeah. tour. Um, there was a story out of Heathrow, though, where he was spotted in a tracksuit being pushed around in, in a, a wheel wheelchair. wheelchair. And he explained that he had just, it was his staff who wanted him to be more comfortable. And they knew that it was going to be a long walk and stuff. And maybe it's time to wrap that tour up yeah. already. So what, is it a seven year, three year tour? Is Something that like that. Well, it got okay. disrupted by the pandemic. Yeah. Saturday, 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 Saturday's <laughs> all right for lying down and watching TV. That's <laughs> what it's, yeah. The biatch ain't back at this point. 
Coming up in just a few minutes, my interview with Josh Lawler about psychedelics and how close they are to being legalized in this country. And I got an email from a listener when they heard Josh was going to be on. There's a documentary on Netflix, apparently, called How to Change Your Mind About Psychedelics. And, and talk about timing. And all life is is good timing and good lighting. That's really all life is. And we had taped the pre-board yesterday for the little whistle wetter for tonight's show. And we got into a little jag about this WNBA player who is going to prison in Russia. And it turns out we didn't know that she had the sentencing coming up. We were just riffing on it. And then she got sentenced to nine years, which I say, don't go to Russia. That's <laughs> the way to avoid that. Yeah. But uh, keep your hash oil at home. Yeah, that would be a thing. You, you don't want to go to these places and think it's just like America because it ain't. Plus, who brings any kind of drug paraphernalia through foreign airports? And I latched on to this guy in Chicago's Facebook posting yesterday because he did that. Hey, got a question for you. Do you think nine years was too long of a sentence for this WNBA player? And I see that that's red meat to me. I got I got to crack wise. So I OK, here's what I posted. I said nine years is too long of a sentence. If you can't say it in one paragraph, you're just rambling. Wait a minute. What was the question? <laughs> yeah. That is a run on sentence uh, yeah. if it starts lasting nine years. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That's a long sentence. And then I had to post again because I just. I, when I can't do yard work, I did cleaning, but I couldn't do yard work today because it just wasn't condu too hot. I, I, I like heat, but I, I don't like it when it's so damn humid that I'm whacking and sweating. And that's the name of that morning show we used do to work on. Do you wear the, on. one of those big floppy hats? Yeah, one of those, right. Yeah. I got my do-rag on. And sure. So uh, that was about the, the player. And then I went back because I thought, oh, I got something else. Here's a tip. If you're going to travel outside the United States, watch the movie Midnight Express, and you'll know what not to take to the airport, unless you like Turkish prisons. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we learned that Turkish prisons are are very brutal prisons. And yeah. I'm, I'm thinking Russia I'm probably in that top one and a half percent of brutal prisons too. That's Yes, I'm shocked that these places like Turkey and other countries that I think have bad prisons have bad prisons. Hmm. And, and when you see the movie Midnight Express, it's been out 40 some years now. And I don't know what Billy Hayes, the lead in this movie was thinking when he had strapped heroin to his body, like they wouldn't find it as he's going through the airport security. And here's the other thing. If you've seen the movie, you know, he gets to the security people and he's sweating like the guy in the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just yeah. like a hose connected to his bandana. And, and that would draw attention. Yeah. There've been these movies, these cautionary tales. What was the other one was uh, Broke Down Palace. And that was the girls where a guy says, yeah. hey, can you take this bag for me? Don't you worry. Uh, don't even look inside. It's right. All Here's five hundred dollars for a quick little transfer of this Just bag. Carry my bag for yeah. me. Yeah. And it's loaded with drugs. And then they got popped. And now their parents are asking the State Department to go in and get them out. And what are we talking about here? Well, Don't go to other case, countries with drugs. That's what we're talking about. In the case of our WNBA BA. star, um, it does look like they may be trading her for that uh, that drug lord, Ex that that yeah. czar. Uh, yeah, the, the Silence of the Lambs guy. <laughs> he is a scary looking yeah. mf -er. Hannibal yes, Lecter. He, he looks like Hannibal Lecter, and we're going <laughs> to give him up to get her back. So it's not done done? I don't think I thought they sentenced her to yet. nine years. Well, they sentenced her to nine years. Now the negotiating begins. Nego so. We're negotiating. We're negotiating. See, this is what Let's these countries get to love. The table. Right. They yeah. love this because they can get one of their sickos out on our tab. That's why you don't <laughs> want to do that. And a sicko to be named later. That's because yes. they got the sports thing going. Too. Right. Yeah. Right. And the other prescient thing that we stumbled on with Josh Lawler talking about psychedelics in a few minutes. Come to find out, Aaron Rodgers went public and said, I was on psychedelics when I played last season. 
and his it really best helped my game. Ever. Yeah. yeah, he said it was his best season ever. Um, and it wasn't like uh, uh, lysergic acid dithalamide isn't. Oh, I pulled that one look, out. LSD or one of those psychedelics. It was some other kind of. I don't know. He went to the Amazon and he pulled some plants or something. It, it wasn't anything that I recognized. So I'm assuming it's something that the um, NFL didn't recognize as a banned drug either. Okay. Well, he said, he, he said psychedelic in his description though. Well, you know, and yeah, one man's can, mushrooms, another man's mushrooms. Can we talk for a second about the fact that he wanted, he was doing that. But the COVID vaccine was too much for him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, hey, we're worried about you know, monkeypox now. COVID's old. That's all so two years ago. Yeah, I, I got to admit, I had a, a bit of a crush on Aaron when he started hosting Jeopardy. But he's one of those stars where I just want him to uh -oh. be quiet because the more he talks, the... The more uh -oh. difficult. It, yeah, I know. I'm starting to fall out of. Uh, so if you run into him at a supermarket and he engages you in conversation, you're just going to shut him down. I'm, I'll talk to him. I mean, yeah. I'm a polite person. Of course, I would talk to him, yeah. but I wouldn't. <laughs> I, oh, wouldn't wow. I wouldn't get all tittery wow. anymore. Wow, Sorry. Wow, wow. How quickly uh, <laughs> the fall happens on the superstars. <laughs> hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to. Play the sponsors here, and then we're going to play the Josh Lawler piece. And then we're going to do the Wisconsin report, and Leslie's got some stuff, and then give away the condom and that a TV thinger, as they call it. Here's the, the TV finger stick. right here. Yeah. Fire stick. Fire stick. All right. So, Bettenhausen Automotive is a fine sponsor. Summer is what you make of it, and Bettenhausen Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram in Tinley Park has your new Ram 1500. During the Make This the Summer event, your best car buying experience starts now at BettenhausenCDJR.com. Yes, that's what they do. All I those love good deals. My car. Leslie and her husband bought a used vehicle from Bettenhausen a few weeks ago. It's like new. They get the best used cars. And you thought it was new. I, I thought it was new when you showed me the picture. I said, I thought you were getting a used car. She said, that is a used car. Uh, Sweet. Just impeccable. Yeah. Yes. Now, if you're buying a new car and you don't live in the Chicago area, still check in with them because they can ship. They've done that. I have relatives that have bought cars. They don't live anywhere near Chicago. They shipped the Jeep. And these relatives are super happy with the price and everything that went with that. Okay. Do you like coffee or tea? Well, you're going to get the best coffee or tea you've ever had if you order from roast2order.shop. Mike Mascow, who's watching this evening, is a sponsor here. And I have been using his coffee now for several weeks. And this morning, got my my roast to order scooper. Yeah, it's a I'm, great doing, I'm doing the drip and I got the press. I, I don't know. I, I have so many options. You like the press. I like to scoop. I do. Okay. I, oh, I, it's just, it's such a clean cup of coffee and it's not acidic. It's just delicious. I know. And I get the coffee and then I turn on me TV and get ready for a double beaver. And one of the episodes is the one where Tony applied to be a lifeguard and he goes to the first day of being a lifeguard. And the guy says, Hey, how old are you? And he said, I'm not 18. If that's what you mean, I need to be 18. So instead of being a lifeguard, he was Called a, it's called in the episode a candy butcher, where he goes around selling hot dogs and stuff. Well, Beaver and his friends and Eddie Haskell and some girls come to see Wally as the lifeguard, and he's not a lifeguard. He's walking around hawking hot dogs, and Beaver was bummed because he wanted to impress his friends. That's my day starting. <laughs> That's what it's I'm so saying. <laughs> how, how how better can you start a day with roast to order coffee and a double Beaver? Now you don't drink coffee or tea. Okay, how about a gift card to somebody that does? They would love this. And Mike ships anywhere in the country. It gets there in about two days. The aroma from the box. Oh, oh <laughs> that's a bingo. Thank you, Mike, for your fine sponsorship and this incredible coffee. It's organically grown. He's got the pods. Do you like the pods? Are they easier for you? He's got those, and they're recyclable. Got a bruise letter. Just go to that website there. You'll see. Now, another fantastic man 
There's so many good men in my life. David Hochberg, boy, is the market weird enough right now? Is everything weird enough right now? Yeah. You need guidance. This is the guy. His team will help you if you're getting a mortgage or refi or veterans loan, a refi. Uh, I said refi. Uh, I'm thinking uh, reverse, reverse, reverse. And all, there's a lot of other stuff that goes with mortgages that you might not know about, but he does. And he'll help you with a free consultation. How does that sound? Pretty good? Good. There are the numbers on the screen. 855-56-DAVID. All right. Okay. We're going to talk to Josh here. And then all the other stuff we promised will be right behind that. Here's Josh Lawler. My guest today is Josh Lawler, partner of Zuber Lawler, chair of New Technology Group. And let me read this to you, because if I had this on my resume, I'd be king of the world. His work with both leading cannabis, psychedelics, and leading blockchain companies positions him perhaps uniquely well to advise as to the intersection of plant, fungus, and blockchain technologies. Is that a 21st century entry on a resume or what? Welcome, Josh. Thank you, Gary. Uh, yeah, that's about right. Josh and I met in this group that we go to every Saturday, and Josh started to talk about psychedelics, and that piqued my interest because, as we have seen over the past years, the vilification of pot broke down, and now it's legal all over the country. And we're starting to see that you shook your head there. Are you? Are you well, it's federally that? illegal. Some well, I, I know, but are they? They're not enforcing. They're not anything. enforcing. <laughs> no, that's the funny thing. So, is it illegal or what? But yeah. in, until somebody says we're coming in to get you, it's selling like crazy around it's the country. Fun functionally legal-ish. <laughs> okay, and my point on that is, Josh, it had been treated as the redheaded step drug of New Jersey for decades, vilified and pushed aside. And then all of a sudden, oh, this has some kind of medicinal property. This makes people feel good and it's not addictive. What was the barrier or barriers that broke down to get to where we are now? Was it that or the fact that the politicians that pushed it aside over the years, they all went away and the younger politicians who grew up with it were more comfortable and put it in that that element in their political portfolio. And the third reason, which I think is the one, the tax revenue. Mm -hmm. The states that were looking for ways to shore up debt saw the revenue possibilities. And when they did legalize it, the money started flowing. Is it a combination of all those things? Yeah, so it's definitely a combination, uh, no, no question. Um, you know, the, the tax revenue piece of it is, is you know, obvious from, from the political perspective. Um, many of the states managed to mess that up by, you know, overtaxing it to the point where, you know, the black market remains and it's, you know, very hard to have a profitable legal-ish business. Um, but that, you know, that, that's definitely there. I think a lot of it, though, you have to remember, you know, it went medicinal legal in California first by a long shot. Um, and, you know, California is kind of a funny state compared to the rest of the country with a funny constituency. And, you know, here there's been a push for legalization for, you know, decades, of course. Um, and then, you know, you've got these medical uses for, you know, glaucoma and for kind of um, ameliorating uh, chemotherapy symptoms where it, it's really hard to say that if a doctor is prescribing it, somebody shouldn't have that when it's, you know, it's so well established that, that that's helpful. And, you know, that, that's what started things is, you know, you, you kind of broke the, the dam a little bit in terms of medicinal use in California. And that was it for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden Colorado, which is very heavily libertarian state government, don't tell me what to do, went and legalized it for adult use also. And just said, okay, well, you know, California has got this for medicinal. And quite frankly, we all know that it's a little bit of a nod and a wink because anybody who wants to can get their doctor to give them a prescription and now they're using it. So, you know, what have you, they, they legalize. And then California, of course, in response, really in response, legalized it for adult use, recreational also. And at that point, I think you saw the other states look at it and go, wow, that tax revenue looks pretty good. And, you know, the, there's not anarchy. Their chaos has not reigned. 
Um, and at this point, you know, there's, I think, 30 some odd states that have now legalized it for, you know, medicinal and or uh, adult use. Um, so it's, it's definitely going that way. It also, the, the coal memo that the federal government put out that basically said, you know, we're not going to go enforce this particular, you know, set of statutes, that, that helped a great deal also. Because uh, even though, you know, it's not making it legal, it at least gives, you know, some comfort to, you know, participants like our law firm, for instance, that, you know, we're not doing something that we're going to get, you know, knocks on the door with windbreakers breaking in. And when the economy goes the way it has been going the last six months, you don't want to put a stick in the spokes of anything that is generating revenue where people don't mind paying that tax. That's something, it's, it's an elective activity. And that's something that stands alone, whereas you have all these other places with the gas tax and everything else where you have to use it. And, and that's why that kind of stands off to the side and is kind of untouchable, I would think. Yeah, I, well, not sure about untouchable, but yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, really, who's going to step in at this point with the economy being what it is and go, oh, by the way, we're turning that spigot off. Yeah, the, the only way I would see that happening, um, and this is heavily speculative, would be if the next presidential election causes some you know, major social upheaval to the point where you know, somebody's pushing an entirely different agenda uh, that you know, is looking almost like to demonize that, that particular reality. Yeah could happen, but I don't think it will. Okay, let's shift into psychedelics. The mm -hmm. drumbeat for psychedelics has been growing louder. Mm -hmm. And this is something, again, that I remember reading about these movie stars back in the 50s and 60s taking LSD under some kind of medical supervision. And then it kind of faded away. And then it became a hippie issue with LSD. And that kind of went into wherever that went into. And now in the 21st century, we're realizing with pot, there are real properties in psychedelics that could help. And how did you get started with psychedelics? So <laughs> from, from a legal career perspective is how I'll interpret that particular question. Um, so, you know, our firm attained notoriety in the cannabis space. We we're really one of the first firms to be there and, and preeminent. Um, we were approached by a law firm in Canada uh, called BLG years ago, and of course, Canada has legalized medical use psychedelics uh, at this point, has for some time. And, you know, they started talking with us about psychedelics initially from a patent law perspective, um, and patenting molecules and things of that nature. And, you know, that, that was kind of the beginning. But, you know, what, what kind of came from that is that there are these industry verticals, you know, psychedelics right now is primarily pharmaceutical. Uh, you know, ketamine is legal. Johnson and Johnson has a product out uh, on it. There are clinics for it. Um, there are many clinical studies that, you know, explore indications ranging from, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder and treatment resistant depression to irritable bowel syndrome uh, for, for psychedelic molecules and various different ones. Certainly addiction is another, you know, another high uh, value target. So it really kind of came through pharma with most people thinking, well, there's not really much of a recreational issue because unlike cannabis where, you know, you might smoke it at the 4th of July barbecue and the kids are around and what have you, um, nobody's really doing any kind of major psychedelic trips with the kids around. It's just a much smaller recreational market or at least so it appears. Um, but then you've got the microdosing angle on it from kind of a nutraceutical angle. Uh, and that's gotten very popular in, in certain other countries. And, you know, the, the funny thing happening along with the pharma and the microdose is that, you know, you, you see a lot of kind of what you would think of as high functioning white collar corporate America, where, you know, those, those high functioning corporate people are looking at psychedelics from a, uh, you know, a brain health and a spiritual perspective um, with, you know, a level of, you know, medicinal respect almost which, you know, cannabis is never going to have because there is such a giant rec market and, you know, it is, you know, coming from the place that it is. So, you know, I think psychedelics ends up being an easier lift from a legal perspective in, in a lot of ways. And it was never as demonized as cannabis in the first place. Um, so, you know, we'll see where it goes. Oregon will go online with its, you know, not illegal in Oregon version, I think later uh, in about a year. Um, California, I think, is going to follow fairly soon after that. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. What's under the psychedelics umbrella? Is it 
mushrooms? Is it LSD? I, I need to have that defined for me. Sure. So I should start by saying I'm not necessarily the person to give the exact definitions, but you know, my understanding, you know, you've got, you know, psychedelics from mushrooms, which is principally psilocybin. Um, you've got, you know, LSD and a bunch of variants of it. You've got, you know, DMT, um, which, you know, uh, one variant of it is what, you know, comes off of certain frogs, uh, if you're aware of that. Um, you've got, uh, you know, ketamine, which, you know, people may think of as a tranquilizer. Uh, certainly a lot of use in veterinary offices. You've got MDMA, uh, which, you know, is now called Molly, uh, or some people will remember it as ecstasy, but that's within the psychedelic space. Um, there's, there's probably a few others that I'm missing there, but those are, those are most of the principal ones. Is Big Pharma, I think, involved in this? Is that what you said? Where they oh, yeah. have, yeah. So in the past, wasn't there this resistance? We don't want this encroaching on our our money shot, and they would do anything to make it look like it was bad, bad, bad. But now they're going. Wait a minute! If you can't beat it, join it, and they're going to be in on this fully, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. No. Already looking at it, you know, it, it is big pharma. Um, you know, you still do need really large clinical trials to, you know, prove efficacy and safety. Um, there's, there's, you know, it, it fits in their model really well, um, where, you know, where cannabis doesn't necessarily fit in their model really well. Um, it can, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of other sources on, on the psychedelic front. You know, there's a lot more respect for the science. Um, you know, the, the biggest part of the industry right now is definitely, you know, clinical trials and research and, um, yeah, big pharma is, certainly involved. And there's a few companies that have you know, formed and gone public that are effectively pushing the direction of becoming big pharma. Are all demographics fully in on this when it becomes pretty much available everywhere? Because baby boomers grew up with pot and LSD in, in their viewfinder, at least. And millennials looks like they're in on the whole, hey, I want to feel good about everything. So there's really... No demographic that I can see that would be, oh, my God. I think that, at least that's me just talking off the top of my head. You can slap me around if I'm wrong. No, I'm, I'm not the guy to say that you are necessarily. I mean, I think, you know, you're, you're always going to have conservative kind of religious right that is going to, you know, follow up on what it believes and, you know, whatever it's been, you know, educated to think is a sin is a sin and that's a sin. Um, but other than that particular demographic, I don't know that there's anybody who should be specifically pushing against it. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I think it, it has a much lighter lift than cannabis is just a lot of the indications that have the strongest clinical research are things that the government is, you know, very interested in. So, you know, PTSD and treatment resistant depression with the number of veterans that, that suffer from those ailments is, you know, it's a huge target and the clinical data is strong. So, you know, do you really think the government's going to stand in the way of that? I mean, it's just, it's just not. Addiction is another one. Um, you know, as long as it's running through the right kind of regulatory pathways, the FDA is approving clinical trials and, and everything else, um, you know, the fact that there's a mind-altering effect isn't going to stand in the way. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to let recreational go necessarily, you know, wild. And, you know, I'm still fully expecting that any adult use is going to have usual restrictions on, you know, no cartoon characters to market. And, you know, you have to be over 21 or over 18, whichever it ends up being and uh, all those types of things. Um, but, you know, with that said, it, it just makes all kinds of sense that, that it would be legal. It's, you know, kind of like the, the stigma has been peeled away. And once the stigma is peeled away, it turns out this stuff is actually really very helpful. Pharmaceuticals can really rip people up inside and, and there are a lot of side effects that have not been compatible with people, but in the psychedelics and cannabis space, that doesn't seem to be the case, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna go all the way there. Um, and, I, and I don't know, I'm not- Yeah, but that's what they're that. going to find out as they do the testing, right? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly. I mean, you know, there's some level of side effect that, that's gonna be okay. Um, you know, for instance, you know, many of these things you know, does it potentially cause nausea at some level? Does it potentially cause dehydration at some level? You know, should somebody who has, you know, arrhythmia not do something? Probably. I mean, you know, all, all those types of things I think are going to be very similar to what you think of as the existing pharmaceuticals. Um, you know, the, the difference that's, that's happening now, um, 
which I think is happening, you know, across a lot of different drugs, not just psychedelics is, you know, our technology is such that whereas it used to be kind of guesswork as to what was going to work. And then you hold your clinicals to kind of get your verification. And it takes, you know, 15 years to get through that. Now it's, you know, we've got atomic force microscopes. We've, we've got, you know, tools where we can see how, you know, protein folding is happening and what receptors are being, you know, hit and all those things. And it, it just speeds up the research a lot. And it also from, you know, to your point, a side effect perspective, you know, you can see why it is that certain side effects are manifesting. You know, there's a company that has a version of LSD that does not have a psychoactive effect uh, that it's using as a cancer treatment because they've figured out using, you know, these types of tools that it's going to be effective. Um, and, you know, you can, you can query whether that's a psychedelic or not. This particular company figured out how to make this without actually going through the psychedelic LSD structure um, in order to, you know, get faster legal approval. Um, so, so what kind of price point, Josh, are we talking about when it does come on the market? Mm. Is this expensive? Uh, Is it about the same as cannabis? Well, um, you know, what will the, what will the market bear? What, what I yeah. can tell you is that Johnson and Johnson's uh, Sportivo ketamine product, which you can only get administered under supervision in a doctor's office, um, which is, I believe covered by insurance is, you know, going to go out retail for some three digit number. And, you know, somebody who's making ketamine in, you know, kind of a less big pharma way, still GMP, um, you know, still legal, is obviously going to be a lot less expensive than that. Um, you know, where that goes, I couldn't, couldn't say. Um, the microdosing thing is going to follow nutraceutical prices. So, you know, I don't know about you, but I take a lot of different, you know, things every morning. I throw down my, my turmeric and my L-citrulline and all kinds of other stuff. And, you know, what do those things cost? Well, you know, it ranges anywhere between, you know, a couple of pennies a day to a couple of dollars a day, depending on what it is. Um, and I think it probably comes out at the higher end of that range for that, for that use case. Um, but you know, it, it's really hard to, to pin down right now. Certainly. What's the timetable again, that you're seeing a year, two years. Or Oregon already has, yeah, I think Oregon's the beginning of 2023, although I wouldn't swear to it. Um, and California, I think is shortly thereafter. Um, I don't know about other States and who's, who signed on. You, you've got a few cities, that have already said, well, within our city, we're not going to enforce. So that's, you know, Denver and Oakland and Santa Cruz uh, have gone that, that route. Um, but, you know, timing is always difficult. I and mean, we, we thought cannabis would be legal, by, federally legal by now. Um, I've been kind of surprised that hasn't happened. So, you know, it's, it's very difficult to predict. And where can people go to find out more about all this? Is there a website you'd point them to? Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of them. It depends on your interest. If, if it's a financial interest, um, I'm a big fan of uh, Psychedelics Alpha. Um, there is a magazine uh, called Psychedelia uh, that our firm actually has a little bit of an equity interest in, in putting out. Um, there's you know, another number of other venues. I'm probably missing some that we also have an equity interest in and somebody's going to beat me up later for that. Uh, but you know, there, there is information available. Um, you know, there's also, you know, from a medicinal perspective, I have to put a, a little bit of a shout out to um, MAPS, uh, M-A-P-S, which is, you know, Rick Doblin's nonprofit uh, that has been, um, you know, pushing research uh, on, on psychedelics for a long time now. And I'm also forgetting what the acronym for MAPS is, so forgive me that one, but, you know, M-A-P-S, uh, psychedelics will get you where you need to go on a Google search. All right. Josh Lawler from Zuber Lawler Law Firm. Thank you, Josh, for your input on this. Oh, thank you, Gary. It's been a pleasure. Well, until then, I'm just going to work the Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> it does what it's got to do uh, until and this other stuff comes along. You microdose your Manhattans until Friday, and, and then you... Um, right macro dose because then i macro i'm macroing now and there's a luxardo cherry at the bottom that's my reward for making it to the bottom what i do is sometimes on a wednes and a thurs i'll have a port to put the base down so it doesn't jar me on friday where oh my god i'm so high right. i'm easing right. in 
Good. All right. See, and that's the well, thing. There that's you have the it. whole idea of these of the microdosing is, you know, this isn't like uh what was that? Uh Go Ask Alice. Do you remember the drug movie of the 70s and and somebody just slips you a Mickey and mm -hmm. next thing you know you're you're in the middle of no, this isn't what he's talking about at all. No, it, this is more amazing. regulated. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, and of I course, have notify... the pharmaceutical giants are getting in on this because well, they're like, cha-ching. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. I have to notify the affiliates. We're going to run long tonight, so get ready for that because we still have the Wisconsin report with Ryan. Ryan, are you still here or have you gone off and done something to piss your wife off? I, I, I'm still here for now. <laughs> I, I think she's got uh, friends over, so we'll see if they uh, save me any dinner. Um, Ooh, so last weekend, started. you know, your yeah, husband last week, isn't as right. supportive as they should be. Right. I've watched that cocktail show. You know, he really doesn't appreciate you. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Last weekend, you all went on a road trip. You actually were doing your piece from the van. Yeah. I said it was the, a silence of, a, of the lamb's reenactment. <laughs> yes. But it was not that. It was what? We were, we were headed to Door County for the weekend. Uh, we were uh, Jamie had a connection at a uh, a cabin in the in the woods. So we we all loaded up, including the dog, which was a kind of a new thing to take the dog on a on a road trip for the weekend. So um, the biggest takeaway was and and how we how we're addicted to our technology. Uh, Henry, we I said, are you having fun? No, I'd like to go to a cabin that actually has internet. So he was like, like, Ooh. so what did we watch? We watched me TV, the Bill left cartoon. So he got introduced to Fl uh, oh. the Flintstones and all those cartoons that we grew up on. So it kind of was a cool twist, but he, there was no cable. There was no air conditioning. There was no internet. So it was really oh my at the God. cabin. It was oh really, my God. It, mm -hmm. it's so funny. And this is, you know, I do this once in a while where yes. I go, I want to time travel back 150 years <laughs> and watch these people try to go through a day where they uh -huh. have nothing. And we're sitting here with all the creature comforts that we could possibly enjoy. And billions of people, 100 billion people have been on this planet since it became civilized. <laughs> <And they were great>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming up on my microdosing. Yeah, the Tesla tequila there. Since it's been civilized. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Alan, take this out. Take this out okay, so it doesn't no, go we'll over do, the, we'll yeah, clean the, it the air. In, in post. Yeah, take Don't it worry. out, edit it Civilized. out. Civilized. Civil. Say it. Civilized. That's what I want to say. Well, it's three minutes to, to the top of the hour, so this is sure. when it's the it, it's the bewitching hour at this point, and we have all these things, and people still go, oh, like your son is growing up yes. with all these things, uh -huh. and he will not want anything that isn't something that is enjoyable where millions billions of people never had air conditioning indoor plumbing cars trains nope. planes automobiles and here we are and he's two days without the internet and he's freaking out he's five <laughs> he is he is he's five years old yeah so we went we did go for a walk because he wanted to catch frogs or he was looking for frogs or beetles or bugs he really is into kind of all the you know creepy crawlies so we did didn't you bring find the any. magnet no, Did we didn't bring that. We didn't bring the magnet because it was only they, like the swamp. The to it, by the cabin, there was a swamp that you could fish in, and he was destined to get in there. And I didn't want to encourage him. Sure. And bodies. <laughs> That's where don't, you find all the good stuff in the swamps. Forest, I know, so, yeah. I what's what's that, Leslie? Yeah, but bodies. There's nothing to pick yeah. up with a magnet. They're not fair. Well, you so, could get a yeah. belt buckle and pull somebody out of a swamp. Oh, tooth, that's true. A tooth, you a yeah. gold tooth. Yeah. Gold uh tooth. -huh. Something. <laughs> Yeah, and I hung out in the beer garden a lot because, um, you know, with the dog, we didn't want to leave the dog at the, the cabin because she wasn't familiar with it and she was nervous. So we'd go like, oh, go have lunch and I'll, I'll just sit in the beer garden with the dog. Don't, don't worry about it. So, <laughs> oh, you sacrificed. So She's well. going to be yeah, living I did. with I did. you in the garage. Uh huh. So it was yeah, a, it, you it and worked. the dog in the garage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was it was a fun weekend, but it was just a little different because we had the dog and there were plenty of restaurants that were pet friendly, but you had to go into order and you couldn't take the dog into order if you were a party of one with the dog. So yeah, it was tough, but tough life. I, I didn't go through withdrawals from the internet, but boy, did Henry that first day, it was like, why are we here? I, I can't do anything. Where's my, where's my YouTube? 
Oh my God. I mean, this is, this is that yeah. generation now yeah. growing up with, they got to have all this stuff. And he said, I know we car- sound like we're a million years old, but yeah, this is going to be weird when they're just cut off from anything. Yep. Yep. And, and well, how do we survive? Too. I mean, there's going to be yeah. a point where these kids don't want to be around other humans. Cause <laughs> let's face it. It takes some training to be able to put right. up with like, other people and if you can find virtual people who fit in your little bubble better why bother with the ones that you know dirty up the the what right. is that the conveyor belt at the grocery right. store, grocery store. Who smell right bad. the wet spot yeah. on the conveyor belt yeah who am i going to exactly. talk to that believes the earth is flat i need to know <laughs> And, and boy, those cartoons, he didn't really know what to think on those. He said, what are these cartoons? But he liked them because those were all the ones that had violence. You know, you could shoot someone or, you know, right. there was a Pink Panther one where the conductor, someone in the audience was being loud and the conductor got a gun and shot him. And it was like, <laughs> wow. And Henry hey. said, I don't think that should be on TV. I said, well, these cartoons are a little different than your what you're watching yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. And then they are shot in the face, but they survive. So it's Correct. okay. They just have a black face and their hair is a little. Exactly. That's all a bullet does. Didn't you think there'd be more anvils in the future yeah. falling on people's right. heads and making those banana lumps, yep. but no, it doesn't happen that way. And, and the last thing, the last question of the day was he watched uh, Flintstones and you know, they pedaled with their feet and all that with the cars, but then they had to stop for gas. And he said, dad, what do they need the gas for? I said, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that didn't make sense. Yeah. Wow, good eye. Good yes. eye. Yes. So so you're ready for the report? I am. And I have a little right. of our trip Alan? in there. Alan, let's run it. It's Wisconsin, yeah, hey. Hey, everyone. It's Ryan. And I have a few fun highlights this week from Wisconsin. Many of us have seen construction accidents where cars maybe go down the wrong way and they don't know where they're going and crash through barricades or get stuck in wet cement. Well, I have a unique one that happened in Milwaukee on I-43 North. A drunk driver got caught in the wrong lane going the wrong direction and ended up driving his car out onto a bridge that was being built. The unique part is there was no base. He got the car wedged between the girders. He ended up not knowing really what was going on because he was so drunk, but it made a big mess and had to shut down the freeway to be able to extract the car from the bridge. This is another reason you should not drive drunk. Switching gears a little bit, Many of you saw on Friday, I was headed up to Door County with my family. One of the highlights was stopping by Al Johnson's restaurant. The unique part there is they have goats that they put on the roofs of the buildings for them to graze and sun themselves. So here's a few pictures of that. It's kind of fun to watch them. They don't fall off. They're pretty happy up there sunning themselves and it was a nice weekend. The added benefit this year is they built a beer garden. So now you can watch the goats and get drunk. The one other crazy thing we saw was a myriad of different bumper stickers. Here's one I chose. The confusing part on this one is it's not even on a minivan, like the bumper sticker says. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, what was that sticker? (laughs) I'm a MILF? What is it? (laughs) This is not a minivan. It's a MILF mobile. Mobile. Yes. yes, but you you don't get to call yourself a milf. You have to be bestowed. A and, milf right on a minivan. This was not on a minivan. So I'm going like you, you missed the you missed the point here. But yeah, you can't <laughs> update your own Wikipedia page. Somebody else has to right. do it. And you're right, Leslie. You can't declare yourself a milf. That has to be done no. by somebody else. <laughs> It's so. precisely. It's right wow. there in the yes. acronym. Right there. Yeah. Where is that goat beer garden? Um, in, uh, sister Bay, Wisconsin, it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty hot restaurant. I mean, we waited two hours. They wait, I didn't wait two hours. Jamie and Henry waited two hours in the inside for, uh, to eat breakfast. I stayed in the beer garden with the dog. <laughs> wait, they waited two hours. To eat they waited two hours for breakfast and that was after a 45 minute drive there. So, mm-hmm. Okay. Was it the best breakfast ever? I hope. We, we've been there before we, Jamie and I've been there probably four or five times. So. Henry liked the goats, but he was getting a little impatient. Like, what are we doing here? And I'm sitting in the beer garden. And where's the internet? Okay. Yeah, where's the internet? <laughs> yeah. Goats. I don't need to see goats. I need the internet. Yeah, I need the internet, <laughs> Dad. I don't want any I'm goats. I'm five years old. I want the internet, damn it, or I'm leaving. Yes. <laughs> okay.
okay. Wow. So if I did that kind of stuff, I just think about my youth and acting up, and my father would have killed me. Right. <laughs> really. You would have seen the what? belt. You've seen the belt yeah. in the bedroom. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Dad, I oh. need the internet or I'm not going to stay on this vacation. Really? <laughs> here. And here comes the belt. Okay, okay. I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Thanks, Ryan. Have a good week. You're welcome. Talk to you later. All right, I don't think Leslie. My father ever used the belt, but he would do that thing where he could snap He'd it. Snap it. Yeah. 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 Never. Ever, I seriously, I don't believe anybody ever got hit with it, which is a good thing. But yeah, that snapping right. thing—it was an attention getter. I know. I know. They don't do that anymore. We need that. We need to bring that back. Um, what do you got? So if you have any plans to climb Mount Blanc, Mont Blanc, uh, you'll need to budget a little more thanks to one French mayor. The town of Saint-Gervais-les-Bains, excuse my French, um, stands at the base of the mountain along one of the most popular routes to the summit. Tired of having his town's resources tapped to rescue stupid climbers who ignore posted warnings, the mayor is now charging all climbers a 15,000 euro deposit to pass through his town. The deposit essentially breaks down to 10,000 euros to cover the cost of search and rescue and another 5,000 euros to cover funeral expenses. The mayor explains that the straw that broke the camel's back occurred recently when a group of Romanian tourists were intercepted as they uh, attempted to climb the mountain wearing shorts, trainers, and straw hats. We will climb the mountain with straw hats. Straw hats. Uh, I like I, this guy a lot. <laughs> this has to too. happen. These mopes need to be taught a lesson. Well, and you've pointed 15, this out. 15,000 euro time deposit. Time. There. Yeah. It, it seems yeah. pretty fair. I'm tired of so babysitting there's been all mopes. this talk about Choco Tacos, um, but it turns out they may not get discontinued after all. Word that Klondike was planning to stop production of the taco-shaped ice cream treat set off a media firestorm. Stories began circulating about fans of the ice cream taco snatching up what reserves they could before they were all sold out. Others began flooding Klondike with hate mail over their decision to retire the confection that first debuted in 1983. The response... Uh, comes from Klondike now, and they seem to be throwing fans a bone. They're not promising anything for now, but they say they hope to bring the Choco Taco back, quote, in the coming years. At the end of the year, the year in review, the big stories will be Roe versus Wade, Choco Taco. Choco Taco. Choco Did Taco, you, Roe versus had, Wade. Have you had a Choco Taco? Yes. Yes. Ha- oh, you have. Yeah, they're very good. Because I've asked other people, and they're like, never tried one. Okay, well, they're missing. They're missing something. Are you furious over its uh, Oh, I'm furious. (laughs) I am so fucking furious. Um, Okay, so that's called marketing. And in other marketing news, uh, Fashion House Balenciaga has everyone all a flutter over their newest fashion handbag. It's the Balenciaga trash pouch available in white blue yellow and black and while the white one especially looks like your standard hefty kitchen garbage bag uh the price tags here couldn't be more different i did the math so a 13 gallon hefty kitchen bag costs around 25 cents the bag by balenciaga sets you back 1750 dollars but you know to their credit, here we are talking about it, and there are pictures it's, it's, of it, it all over the web. It, it's seventeen hundred dollars for it. Looks exactly like a trash bag. I sent a picture. I don't know if we have the picture available. Alan, do we I... have a picture? No. Yeah, give me a sec. I uh, oh. I had the contest loaded the, up. The fact is, oh. I've got a whole box of them under my sink. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, uh, yeah. I. It's not even. I. You know that they were trying to make it look like a trash bag. Um, let's see. Oh, here you go. There, that's the and they blue. did a good job. It's a trash bag. It's a trash for seventeen hundred dollars. Um, what's cute is that the white one actually has a red handle, so it couldn't look oh, more God. like a hefty bag if it dried. Yeah. How soon before somebody mistakes the actual handbag for trash and throws it out? That's my seventeen oh, hundred tra- dollar trash bag. There's. There it is. <laughs> there it Three is. Three trash in bags in a row. 
Um, oh my God. God, we're doomed. Okay, we I really think doomed. that you Is know it, here we are. It? We're we're in, we're, we're running late. Let, let's, yeah, let's do it. Do let's give drawing, away the condom have... and the fire stick. All right, everybody, ready? Hit the computer button. Here we go. Lynn. Congrats. By the Alan, way, I couldn't help but notice that Lynn and her husband have been texting a lot, and they text to each other, which I think is so cute. So, <laughs> like, are, are you still a pair, or do you, is this how you That's how they communicate. It other? works for them. All right, <laughs> they're Lynn, like, Alan, what They're sh- like, hey, what sh- we only do it. <laughs> what should she do? Lynn, send an email to Gary at Gary Meyer Show at GaryMeyer.com or text 773-888-2157. Regular charges apply. Or if you're on Facebook, send them a private message there. With your address, and we'll get that to you. All right. Um, look at how low it is. That means we're, wow. we're getting ready to land here. We're flying a little dirty. And how low it's time can you for go? the complimentary cannoli. You ready for it? Oh, yeah. There it is. Look at new cannoli. we got some new cannoli. Sweet. What about the schnauzer? Um, go ahead. Take the schnauzer up to the peak at Mont Blanc, but make sure it's bundled up properly. Bundle you, it. You don't want frostbite on that thing. No, you do not. Fetch on all fours. Thank you for listening. Back on Monday, it is three in the green. Gear is down. Flaps are down. The voice of the globe, the gear force, has landed. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. If you like that, I got other stuff I think you're going to like. This is the Gear Force. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Yeah. And please, please, please tell your friends and family to like and subscribe too. All right. Yeah. More eyeballs. It's a good thing. Boom. Shaka laka.